The adventure continues this week on Ford Outfitters. It's pretty exciting. We got Conway Bowman coming in, and he's going to target some serious large mouth, bucket mouth bass. They're so chunky. He's from California, and he's used to finessing fish, and this is completely opposite than the finesse, but I know he's going to pull it off and get him a big one. Woo, dog. This is the holy grail of largemouth bass fishing. I know those big fish are out here, and I'm going to do all I can to catch one. Fred Eichler has taken all 29 species recognized by Pope and Young with a recurve bow. Conway Bowman cracked the code for Mako sharks on the fly. The outdoors has led them to adventures around the world. Now, two of North America's most accomplished sportsmen and their Ford trucks are on a mission to learn the secrets and stories of America's best outfitters. This is The Outfitters, built by Ford F-Series. I'm in Mexico, and I'm headed to the Angler's Inn Lodge, where I'm going to meet Billy Chapman Jr., and he's going to show me the ins and outs of catching a lot of largemouth bass on Lake El Salto. Now, Lake El Salto is one of the world's premier largemouth bass fisheries, and it doesn't only boast great numbers of bass, but also there's the potential of catching double-digit fish. In fact, a really good potential. The popular Mexican resort city of Mazatlan serves as the jumping off point for fishermen destined for El Salto. Located about 80 miles northeast of the Sierra Madre foothills, Anglers Inn Lodge and in El Salto are hallowed grounds in the bass fishing world. Best known as the outfitter that introduced the El Salto fishery nearly 30 years ago, Billy Chapman remains an enthusiastic and dedicated outfitter. Well, your daily day as an outfitter if you're going to be on top of your game is getting up 4.30 in the morning because your customers are getting up at 5.30 and it's a busy day, making sure everything's right and uh, the attention to detail the Angler's in is known for. Hasta luego, amigo. So Billy, El Salto is legendary and I've been reading about it for a long time and there it is and that is why it's legendary. Look at that, it's the ultimate bass lake. Gosh. You know, it is legendary and it's on a lot of people's bucket list, you, you know. Kidding. Let's get this boat launched and uh, I'm going to go hit it. I don't know if you're going to go with me, but... Uh, Not a lot of people coming and going today, but I will be with you this afternoon. This afternoon? Yeah. yeah. Day at the pool. Well, I'll warm them up for you. How's that? Would you do that? <laughs> find the big ones? I don't, want to, I don't want any popcorn fish now. Okay. Man. No popcorn. Okay, yet, okay. Man. I'll try. I'll try. But once again, I'm trying to manage my expectations. <laughs> Let's keep them hot. Yeah. Conway is led by El Salto Sage Martin, one of many longtime guides at Angler's Inn. Bottom line is, we've never missed a season on Lake El Salto since 1989. So that's a bunch of years fishing this lake. And for that reason, we got some of the best staff and our guides are veterans because they, they all have 20 to 30 years experience. Unfortunately, a lot of our guides are starting to turn gray like myself. Got it, set the hook. Got it. What happened to it? I don't know, man. So I'm, I'm just, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? I'm like, Give me, I'm putting, me, I'm putting your hook. So Martin and I get out, and honestly, I'm struggling early in the morning. It, it, I see the fish, the movement. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought I hit yeah. him hard enough. So when he hits, I'm swinging like this. Is it set the hook? This. Like this. Look at the side. Yeah. Go ahead, you're fishing. Perfect, guys. I'm not used to this fishery, and I was having a hard time hooking fish. I was getting a lot of hits. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. But I was, you know, catching fish here and there. My first El Salto bass. But I was also missing Ooh. a lot of fish. Got it. Oh. But as the morning progressed, got it. I got better. I got more confident. Martine really helped me in terms of. Uh, that's a better fish. What I had to do to be successful <laughs> at catching fish. Oh, look at this guy. Yeah, there was no doubt he just nailed that really hard. This is by far the biggest plastic worm I've ever used. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the bigger the worm, the bigger the fish? Oh, yeah. Got it. Yeah. I've got a big piece. Come on. Oh, jeez, man. 
That's a nice one. Oh yeah, baby. Unlike saltwater fish oh that basically God. take a lure or take a fly and they run away, the largemouth bass here at all salt seem like they just want to rustle you around the boat. <sighs> Holy good golly, look at this thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. But that initial hit and that first initial 30 seconds is, is a very intense fight. God darn, look at this guy. And I've caught a lot of largemouth bass and I've caught a lot of Florida largemouth bass, but these are the hardest fighting largemouth bass I've ever caught. I mean, these things really kick your butt. <laughs> Martin, you the man, brother. Thank you, sir. Woo! Holy moly, look at that slug. When I hooked that fish, I thought I was hooked to the bottom or I was hooked to one of these big stumps. But it started moving, and then it started taking some drag. And at that point, I would go, this is a really big fish. Nine and a half. Jeez. Yep. Holy smokes. So to have that kind of success right off the bat, your first day, I mean, that's that's pretty incredible. Look and uh, I'm stoked. Everything is icing on the cake from here. But you know, there's still one more thing I want to get. I want to try to get a double digit fish. There it goes. Ooh. Amigo, that was great. Wow. Good, good. Good set the hoop. Fish on! Conway gets the rare opportunity to share a boat with Freshwater Fishing Hall of Famer Billy Chapman on legendary El Salto when The Outfitters returns. He's bending the rod on you. That's a nice one. The Outfitters is brought to you by the Ford F-150, the future of tough. So this is the white board. This is the white board, bud, and it looks like you're going to be on the board, but... You're at the bottom of the board here. Yeah, Tom. you're right. It looks like there's a lot of big fish up there that I have to beat. We're going to be erasing this board here shortly because okay. it's, it's filled up in the, in the last five days. You got some 14.4s, uh, you got 11.4s, you got 10s, and you need to list your bait you caught it on. Nine, but you're at the bottom. Seven, five, All it's right. almost 10. And I got that Berkeley. Power worm, black yeah. and blue. As you can see, there's another black and blue. But here's our goal, partner. Okay. We're going to erase this board. Okay. And within the next couple of days, you're going to come back with your, you got to be the 10-2, you got to be the 10-9, you got to be the 11-4. 11-4. We got you at the bottom. At the bottom. <laughs> We're going for the top. Let's do it, man. <laughs> All right. All right, man. Cool. Well, I'm excited about getting out on the water today, but I got to do something first. We need some tie downs for the boats and uh, we need to transport some 50 gallon barrels. Okay, Conway, if you could move that divider back for me. Got it. Conway just wanted to tag along and help me out so we could get down to the water just a little bit faster. I'm the kind of guy I've always been hands on when it comes to our operations. And even though we're spread out. That's all about getting great people. And the great people are out there. And I believe in giving people opportunities. And you'll see it at all our properties because they watch me work. And they work right alongside me. Billy Chapman Jr. has roots in Mexico, and along with his father, helped pioneer bass fishing south of the border. We're gonna whack them, I can feel it. That's all I've ever heard about El Salto is how many fish you whack. <laughs> Additionally, Billy runs fishing operations in the Amazon and nearby Sea of Cortez. He certainly has his hands full. So Billy, how many fish do you think you've caught in your career down here, in this lake? In this lake? Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> well, that's a tough question right there. Uh, my biggest is 13.8. But I've seen a lot of bigger fish caught here. The lake record is 18.8. Wow. So, you know, we got out here and, I mean, it was right off the bat. I mean, no messing around. And pulled up to a spot, it was like, I mean, one, two, three. I mean, it was fish on right off the bat. He's bending the rod on you. That's a nice one. And at that point, I realized, okay, this is going to be a great day. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at this. Nice, Ooh. nice, nice. Mm, mm, mm. Man, that is sweet. What's interesting to me is this lake was stocked with Florida strain largemouth bass in the mid-80s, right? In 1985 is when we put the Florida strain in here. And then we let it sit for five years. Well, actually four, because we started fishing it in 89. You know, you don't know how big they are here until you actually see them, by the way. <laughs> They're you know? so chunky. By 1989, we already had fish pushing eight pounds. That's cool. That hit was unreal. Just 
thing just stops. And you know, you know, the little guy's kind of tick, 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 but when you get a, a fish like that, it just stops and it's... You know it. That's when your heart starts uh, pumping. I guess because of my grandpa who came down to Mexico in 1905, he was a pioneer, and I have a little of that in me. Woo! There we go. <laughs> we got it. We're getting our timing down. We got it. <laughs> and uh, I don't like being last in. I got to be the first in. Let's move on. This is a great hole, but they're all kind of cookie cutter. Okay. Let's go find a couple of big ones. Okay. I said we got our timing down, and uh, that's where my passion is. Is oh man. Finding new fisheries, opening new fisheries. Oh, gonna put my fish up against yours. Oh, you, you smoked me, man. Not yeah. much, but I think I got you just by a pound, Let's man. See. Uh, <laughs> Not much. The discovery of the fishery, and uh, that's what I love and live for. And uh, once I get it up and running, I wanna know what's around the next corner. <laughs> yeah, those little guys, they'll come back on you. The bigger guy, once, once he grabs it and you pull it away from him, He's not coming back. So the morning bite was a gradual sort of build. It was slow at first, and it was sort of, you know, picking here and there. Martin, you saw that before I did, but this afternoon was full bendo. I mean, it was almost every cast catching a fish at will at times, and it didn't matter what we were throwing. Stop water, Martin. Stop water. And just good volumes of fish, hard fighting fish. So the afternoon definitely went beyond my expectation. There he is. That's a better fish. Oh, this is a nice one. All right. <laughs> like that guy. Yeah, baby. That's got some shoulders on it. Looks like we got a wrap for today. Oh, uh, that was a pretty good day, brother. First day on El Salto. Are you kidding me? I've okay. caught, I don't think I've ever caught this many bass ever. Oh, we're just getting warm. Oh, up. I know. That's what, I, that's I what mean... I'm saying. It's incredible. <laughs> oh, my God. Great day, man. It was great fishing with you today. Looking brother, forward to tomorrow, man. Tremendous. Yeah. Huh? Awesome. So the next morning I meet Martine at the boat. It was the perfect day, it was glassy. Uh, there was some cloud cover and I really was anticipating some really great surface action. On the second morning I felt a lot more confident. That's it, that's it close to the stick. The stick right here? There you go, nice pass. Martine's great, he was always on it, making sure that I have the right bait. Got it. Ooh, that's a great topwater fish right there. And guiding me through the techniques and showing me where to cast. There you go. Let it be nice. I guess a good way to start the day. That's awesome. Look at that. That's a great top water fish. There you go. Give him a kiss. It was a tremendous morning. Beautiful. Conway is finding his stroke in time for Billy's return and the goal of finding a double digit bucket mount when the outfitters returns. That's a big fish. I have entered numerous contests before. I never thought I'd be a guy winning a new Ford F-150. I do watch a lot of outdoor television. I watch Ford Outfitters. I like uh, Brett Eichler. I love his enthusiasm. Congratulations, Derek! Oh, exactly. <laughs> you are the That's 2014 not... Ford Outfitter Sweet Stakes winner. And I've got the keys to a brand new F-150. Let's go give it a try. Is that beautiful? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Yeah, thank That's you. pretty sweet. I've always been a truck guy and I love my Ford trucks. Log on to thefordoutfitters.com and enter for your chance to win the Ford F-150. Congratulations to Ford F-Series owner Josh Gomez, our Outfitters Sportsman of the Week, who adds to the legacy of great outdoor adventure made possible by Ford trucks. Visit facebook.com forward slash Ford trucks to share your own trophy. Conway is on the big board at Angler's Inn, but his bass fishing skills are a bit rusty, especially the hook set. It's a new day on legendary El Salto, nice. and he'll have ample opportunity yep. to hone technique. Yeah, buddy. They are actually getting bigger. <laughs> yep. I started off hot this morning, and then I hit kind of a cold streak. Got it. Ah, uh, nope. Missed it. Got uh, it. Oh, missed it. So after <clears throat> missing, I don't know how many fish, I looked back and Martin said, Hey man, you're one for ten. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Set the hook. And then immediately I threw out and lost another one. <coughs> but, I mean, that's bass fishing. Back to the lodge. Okay. Yeah, see? After siesta, Conway and Billy hit the road to do a little local sightseeing. 
I want to show you this town that's over 500 years old. Cool. Called Kosala. It's uh, one of the magical towns of historical towns of Mexico. And back in the old days when the Spaniards landed in Mazatlan, because it was a real deep port and it's got the second highest lighthouse in the world, second to Rio. And they could put the cannons up on the top of that mountain right. and protect their fleet, which they were filling up with gold and silver and sending it back to Spain. Well, that's what I love about uh, mainland Mexico is that you have all these great little, you know, these towns that are sort of off the beaten path, right? Yeah, how often do you get a chance to see something like that? You don't. Home to 7,000 residents, Kosala is without doubt one of the most beautiful villages of the state of Sinaloa, a remarkable mining town that dates back to 1550. A walk down one of the streets is like stepping back in time to the days of Spanish rule. In 2005, Kosala was designated a Pueblo Magico by the Mexican government in recognition of its natural beauty, cultural riches, and historical importance. Billy and Conway return to El Salto to find an afternoon thunderstorm brewing, a good downpour, a welcome daily occurrence in the summer, and often triggers a ferocious bass bite. This time of year, you can expect a little bit of rain. Change the conditions a little bit, it cools things down, gets nice and cloudy, but it does turn the top water bite on. So Billy, we had a little bit of, we had a little bit of rain this afternoon, didn't we? We did. Uh, it, you know, June, July, and August, September is our rainy season, but it really begins in June, so it's no big deal, but what it does is uh, it cools down the temperature, the surface temperature of the water, and it just brings the fish up. Nice fish. As the rain subsides, so does the top water bite, and Billy makes the call to switch to the venerable plastic worm. So being on the boat with Billy that afternoon, it was great because I got an insight not only into how to fish, because he really showed me how to work a plastic worm. When you feel that tap tap, you're gonna give it to her, but never take it from her, and get in a good stance, and you're gonna rip her lips off. Because you gotta go through that plastic, then through her, her jaw, right? Woo, dog! I always do two hook sets. When you set the hook, you gotta get down as quick as possible, keep a tight line, and set it one more time. Just to drive that hook in there. Drive that hook okay. in there. You know, working the plastic worm, you paid attention to detail and watching the line, feeling the worm and setting the hook. It's not that dissimilar than running a lodge. You have to be efficient. You have to pay attention to detail. So to run a lodge like Angler's in, I mean, how do you get such a great staff? I mean, this lodge, this particular lodge, has 80 employees, and we actually have two staffs, and all our staff are pretty much lodge staff is from this region. So when I build a lodge, I'll come in and hire 100 people, 125 people. It's a process, and uh, taking care of your people is real important. Conway has one more day to ply the waters of El Salto for the fish of a lifetime. Will he catch a double-digit bass when the Outfitters yep. returns? That's a good one. That's a real good one. So going into the next morning, I felt my bass fishing skills had really refined. And I felt really confident. I was confident in casting. I was getting the system down pretty well, the techniques. The overall picture felt good, so I felt really good. Martine and I decided to get out here really early this morning. We left the, uh, the lodge at first light, and the hope is to get a really big bass on top water. So, there he is. There's number two. So far, it looks like it's pretty good. Top water action for bass is, is the ultimate, in my opinion, in bass fishing. It's as close as you get to sight fishing because you're, you're working structure, you're seeing fish working bait on the bank, close to the bank. But it's the tops, I think, for bass angling. You know, once you make that cast with that surface popper or Zara spook type lure, it's all anticipation. You're working that lure, it's, it's chugging through the water, right? But at any second, got it. that bass can explode on it. So it's very intense, you're very focused, you're keeping your line tight, you're working the rod tip, you're making sure that lure is moving just perfectly and trying to figure out the right cadence for that lure. And once you find that and the fish hits it, it it's intense. And he was right on that point. Yep. The best thing that I found, kind of looking at that lure through my peripheral vision and just feeling the tension. Because those fish would come up, grab it, and then head down instead of going for it. And if I saw that, I would pull it out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. 
So Martine and I had a great morning of fishing. It was epic. Not only the fishing, but the scenery was absolutely spectacular. It was the most beautiful bass setting I've ever seen. I caught more fish on top this morning than a, an average guy probably in the States would catch in a year. But I gotta tell you, these aren't small bass. I mean, these are big bass anywhere else. And the ones I was catching this morning, yeah, they're kind of average down here. So that, that's pretty cool. But at any corner, at any given piece of highest and any margin on the shoreline, you could have potentially, or I could have potentially, caught a double digit fish. So that anticipation is always there. So YL Salta was great. And it's, it's the greatest bass fishery probably in the world. There he is. That was cool. Man, that was really cool. Nice. That was a great take. He just came straight up and just nailed that popper. Hey, I've had a great trip at El Salto, but I've got one more session to go. Though I've caught a big fish and lots of fish, I still want that teener, that double digit fish. And um, I still have hope that I'm gonna get it. Well, it's our last day. Expectations are high. Conway, I think he's on his game now. So I know those double digit fish are here because there are a lot of people in the lodge that are catching those fish and they're up on the whiteboard. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Oh my God. So that gives me motivation to come back and try to get that fish. Good way to close out the day, babe. Man, oh good job, man. man. Went down to the last two minutes, good job. See you, baby. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. <laughs> If you're serious about outdoor adventure, a tough truck is one of your most important tools. The Ford F-150, setting new standards in durability, power, and innovation. To learn more about F-150 and a chance to win one of your own, visit thefordoutfitters.com.